know, chipping doesn't have to be that hard. In these next three videos, I'm going to share with you some of the real secrets to making chipping easy. People have told me time and time again this has helped them tremendously on their short game, and I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go and get started. Now, if you're struggling with the wedges, I have got the absolute best solution you've ever seen. You see, pros do this one thing right, and that's launch the ball less than 30 degrees. It's extremely important, and the only way that you can launch it less than 30 degrees is to have lag and to have shaft lean at impact, so the shaft's gotta be leaning forward in front of the club head. If you don't do that, which almost every single player that I've ever worked with doesn't do that, every recreational player, if you don't do that one thing, wedges are gonna be impossible. You hit one 60 yards, the next one goes 40, the next one shoots over the green thin, chunks, everything you can do wrong, you name it, that's gonna happen. So that's the magic in wedges. I've gotta get the shaft forward, and I've gotta get this to launch 30 degrees or less. If I can do that, it's gonna be fantastic. So here's a great way to measure that, even if you don't have any of this fancy equipment that I have here. Now I've got my Flight Scope X3. It's gonna tell me my launch angle down here at the bottom of the screen. It's handy if you have one of those, but there's a, there's a real easy way to do it. I'm gonna measure from some point where I can see my ball fly and compare it to a wall or a ceiling or an alignment stick or something like that. I'm just gonna walk and see how many feet it is from where I'm hitting my golf ball to where I measure it. So I'm gonna walk one, two, three, four, five paces. I'm about 15 feet from where I'm hitting my ball until it hits the screen. Now, at that point, if I went 15 feet forward and 15 feet up, that would make a 45 degree angle. I wanna launch it less than 30. So I'm gonna go two thirds of the height. So if I go 15 feet forward, instead of going 15 feet up, I'm gonna go 10 feet up. Now that just so happens to be the top of my screen here. That's 10 feet high. So I know if I hit that golf ball and it hits the top of this screen, that's at a 30 degree angle and that's the absolute maximum that I wanna hit this golf ball. Now I'm gonna cut into this video for just one second. I know if you're great at math, this video is absolutely driving you nuts because the real math would say this is really 8.9 feet or whatever that is. But for the purpose of this, two thirds is easier to do and plenty good for what we need. Back to the video. Now in a second, I'm gonna teach you a drill that's gonna give you a surefire way to keep it below that, but you can measure this however you want. You could also take something like this. I just have a pull noodle on this stick here. This is a flag stick. Uh, like you'd hang a flag from your house. It's got an alignment rod on it and a pull noodle on it. That's also set about at that same angle. I could set that there and I could try to keep this ball below, launching below the pull noodle. I could stick a alignment stick in the ground. I could do it a variety of ways. But let's go ahead and hit one here. Notice where it hits up on the screen and you're gonna see as long as it's below the top, I'm well within range of where I need to be. I'll whack the pull noodle there just a little bit, had a little too close to me. But you can see that was perfect. A little half swing sand wedge didn't swing hard at all. A little half back swing coming on through. That ball went 87 yards carry distance and 26.7 launch angle. 26.7 is below 30. I'm gonna hit it like a tour pro if I can do that. Now, now we have a way of measuring it to know if we're doing it right. Now we know the difference between what the pros are doing and why almost everybody struggles with the wedges. How do we learn it for ourselves? Well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that wedge and I want you to set it up about a club head width off the inside of your back foot. So if I have my feet about two club head widths apart, if I wanna go a little farther swing, I may go three club head widths apart. Doesn't matter, it's just gonna be a little bit narrower than a full swing. Just makes it easier to, to have control. I'm gonna put that ball about one club head width inside my back foot. I'm gonna flare open my front foot, which is gonna help me to rotate through that shot and get the shaft leaning forward more easily. Now from here, I wanna make sure that I have a lot of lag. And if I get down in the bottom of the swing, when my club's parallel to the ground, I wanna see the butt end of the club over top of the golf ball. That's gonna ensure that if I get in this position, as I rotate on through, I'm gonna have a lot of shaft lane. Now if the butt end of the club reaches the golf ball and my club is way down here, I've cast the club, I've flipped it, and I'm gonna scoop it I'm gonna be a terrible wedge player. There's really nothing more to it than that. So I'm gonna do some little practice swings, butt into the club over top of the golf ball, club still parallel with the ground. Now this would be parallel with my target line. You can see my alignment stick, the line on the screen, this would be parallel. I actually wanna make sure that I hit a draw on these wedge shots. So I'm gonna take this club and just pull it a little bit inside. I'm gonna exaggerate here and go about 10 or 15 degrees inside. And I'm gonna imagine that I'm swinging 10 or 15 degrees outside. So my club is swinging in this direction rather than straight down the target line. 
Now the reason for that is a little bit of a cheat that makes it easier for players. You see, if I swing to the right, I can actually close my club face a little bit more, which takes loft off the club. Most players struggle getting it de-lofted enough. This makes it easier to have happen. It also ensures that you're gonna get a nice little draw, so the ball turns over from right to left, and it makes it just a little bit more fun to play golf because everything gets more consistent. So now I'm gonna feel this. I'm gonna swing out that direction, and I wanna make sure that I keep it below the top of that screen. So there, again, not a very hard swing. It drew from right to left, 90 yards with a sand wedge. That's nowhere near a full swing. You can put out very little effort and hit it very far and very solid and, and straight if you do it this way. So again, watch my back swing. I'm only gonna take it back to here, and then I wanna make a full follow through, and it's gonna be around that 90 yard mark again. Just a hair thin on the wedge. Again, nice draw, 91 yards again. Good swing there. I'm gonna go about halfway back again, and I'm still gonna get 90 with that sand wedge. Another one, all these below the top of the screen, all of them drawn from right to left. That one was just a few yards shorter than that. You're seeing just with a little half swing, I can get it almost 90 yards and have it be really solid each time. Now finally, there's one last trick to making this as easy as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and set up an impact bag. Now, iLine Golf makes this particular impact bag. You can get whatever you want. You can even uh, wad up a bunch of towels, some dirty clothes, whatever you wanna do to make it easy for you. You don't have to have this one, but I like this one because it also has a little ramp on the front of it to mimic that shaft lane. So this is the wedge impact cube here. And you can see that the shaft now matches up with the angle of this when I'm doing my wedges the right way. So I like it for that. I also like it to where I can put this impact bag to where it's in line with my golf ball. So now what I have to do, I'm gonna put this golf ball about a foot in front of this impact bag. I don't know if my flight scope will read it when it's doing this, but I got the golf ball about a foot in front of the bag. The bag is in line with the golf ball. Now I have to swing inside and really de-loft it to hit that nice draw when I have this little impact bag there. Again, below the top of the screen, 89 yards, little half swing, very repeatable when you do it this way. All right, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some absolute secrets on pitching it like a pro. And I'm not talking about pitching it okay or decent or pretty good. I'm talking about absolutely being a magician around the greens and being able to feel like you can set up over a shot like this and hit every single one of them with spin close to the hole to almost feel like you could just toss it up there within tap in range every single time. It can be that easy. I'm on a fairly tight lie here. Some people might get nervous on this. This isn't really long fluffy grass. But you'll see all these are coming out clean and I'm just chopping them right up there by the hole. It can be easy once you learn the right technique. Now, there's a couple things I'm gonna go over in this video. I'm gonna go over what I call the front shoulder pivot, and we're gonna talk about how to get absolutely laser dialed in on your low point. You notice all those look like I was barely just brushing the grass, and I had an open space 60 degree wedge, but they're coming out low with a lot of spin. I wanna share with you the secrets on how to make that happen. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump into the details on this. I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. Now, as I started diving more and more into short game and really trying to master it myself, I realized it was extremely frustrating because there's so many different styles. You see some people saying to lock the hips in the lower body and use more of an upper body, like a putting type stroke. You see some people talking about rotating the body. Some people are gonna tell you that you need to have a little more of a cut swing. Some people are gonna tell you you need a little bit more of a draw swing, played off the toe play it off the center, have the hands low, have the hands high. You're hearing all this different stuff. And I'm not saying that a lot of that doesn't work. And really, I think you can do a lot of different styles and make it work. I'm gonna share with you the style that I have found works the best. And I'm gonna break it down for you piece by piece. And I'm gonna give you some drills that are gonna seem a little counterintuitive, honestly. But once you try those out, you're gonna see the results firsthand. You're gonna see me hit some great shots here. And I know if you follow this, you're gonna have a lot of success with it. So this isn't the only style that works, but this is a style that if you practice this, you do the drills that I'm gonna give you here, make sure you bookmark this because you're gonna to wanna to refer to it because you're gonna be chipping and pitching it awesome when you're doing this. So first off, I want my feet very close together. 
if my feet are farther apart and I'm using a kind of locked lower body style where I let my upper body do most of the work, I do not like that at all. And the reason is once you get a little farther away from the green like this, then locking your lower body, you really have to use so much upper body and hands and arms, like you really start to jab at it. It can be not that good once you get farther away. Now, if I have a little 10, 12 foot putt or a 10 or 12 foot chip, that can work perfectly fine. But as I get a little bit more distance, I wanna go ahead and let that body rotate. I want my knees really close together. I want my feet really close together. I like to have my stance a little bit open as I go over here in a second, but I want them close together. That way I can pivot and rotate back and through and just as I was gonna to toss a golf ball up to the hole. So that's the first piece. I almost feel like your, your heels are within two or three inches of each other would be really good on a shot like this. And I really want my body to rotate back and through so that it's creating a momentum. And that's what we'll go over a common theme in all this is that you wanna have a momentum to your body and let it go back and through rather than, rather than trying to get jerky or jabby. Number two, I wanna have the face a little bit open. Simply for this, it gives me a little bit more margin for error for a couple reasons. As I open the face, this flange on the bottom of the club starts to get exposed and it helps it glide through the turf, which means less chunking and less thinning. It also allows me to get a little more forward shaft lean without de-lofting the club too much. So here I have a 60 degree wedge. I'm gonna open the face a little, that probably turns it to, let's say 60, five degrees, something like that. And then I'm gonna lean the shaft forward a little bit, which turns it back to it's, you know, a little less than 60 degrees at a dress. So that way my hands can be leaning in front. My hands can be leading the way as I make contact to this, which will make the contact more consistent. And I'll still have enough loft there to generate some spin. So here, a little bit open, the hands are leading the way. And again, I'm rotating my body every single time getting that nice clean contact, even made one. All right, so this is gonna be pretty good. I feel like this is gonna be a, a nice video where everything's gonna start to come together for me. So we're off on a good start here, feet close together, body rotating, play the face a little bit open, play the hands a little bit up. Here's the part that is the most important of any of it. It's contact. You'll notice when I'm hitting these shots that I'm brushing the turf, I'm not digging down into it. So I'm not playing my hands forward with this late leading edge square and hitting down into that where I'm really chopping down in the ground. If I do that, I could start to lay the sod over it. I could start to chunk some and thin some. So we definitely don't want that to happen because we're gonna be inconsistent if we start to hit down into the ground too much. I'm also letting the momentum dictate my low point. So as I swing back and through here, as I go back and through, I'm feeling like, almost like I could take two fingers and just barely kind of let the momentum of the club swing as I let it fall out of my hands. That's how loose I'm holding it here, but I let the momentum of this club swing and I could brush the turf. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna open the face slightly, I'm gonna let my body pivot and I'm just gonna take a couple fingers here in my left hand and I'm gonna feel like I just brush the ground. That's the feeling that I wanna have to create that. So the reason the ball is coming out low is not because I'm de-lofting the club. The reason the ball is coming out low is because I, I do have a little forward shaft lean, but I'm hitting it so clean. What's happening is this club face is grabbing the ball. There's a lot of friction there. And because I'm, I'm hitting down on it slightly or level with the ground, that ball is grabbing the club face and coming out lower. It's not the loft on the club that's making that go fairly low. And on this one, I'm actually gonna play the face open again. You'll see this by looking at my club face, it's fairly open. And I'm gonna to try to hit one really low just with a lot of really good friction. There you go, you see that never got much higher than pin high. I hit it a little hard trying to get more spin on it. And you'll see that it checked up. I almost landed to the hole and only rolled out five or six feet. Same thing there, not really getting much above pin high. And you can see those checking up right by the flag. So the only way that can happen is getting good friction on there. The only way that you can get good friction is really control your low point by letting the club momentum dictate where you ground out. And you can see that one was nice and low there too. Let me hit one more, and then I'm gonna show you the best drill to get the feel of this momentum for yourself. And 
to really dial in on how I can come down and make the cleanest contact possible every time. So let's jump up on the green. I'm gonna show you a drill that works great for this. All right, now here's the part that I warned you about that's gonna seem a little bit odd. So I'm here on the putting green. They just recently um, aerified the green. So um, I wouldn't recommend doing this on the course like I am today, but the green's a little bit rough anyways. I do this on the chipping green. Find right by the edge of the green where you're not really gonna mess anything up, even if you take a little bit of a divot as you're first learning this. But after you've done it a while, I'm telling you, you're gonna get just so precise, laser-like precision on your low point. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So what we're trying to be able to do here, if you're gonna be a fantastic pitcher and chipper of the golf ball, is I have to be able to control when my club comes down, I need to be able to have it hit the ground in the same spot every single time and at the same depth. So you can see I'm swinging hard enough there to where I'm actually roughing up. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a smack. You can see some sand kind of popping up as I'm doing that. And because my club face is a little open, it's just the bounce of the club is kind of skipping on the turf. It's not that leading edge. If you expose that leading edge, you're gonna have difficulty digging into the ground. So if I expose that leading edge, I can hit a little too far down, chunk it, and it pops up. I can hit it a little thin and it shoots across the green. If I have the face a little bit open like this, I can still get a little forward shaft lean and that leading edge just isn't quite exposed there. I'm never gonna dig. You can see I've, I've hit this ground 10, 15 times and I'm not digging down there. Now there's a difference here in how, you've probably seen people say that before and you probably think, well, you know, Clay, I would just do that. If I could control it like that, I'd just do it. I'm gonna show you the technique that makes that possible. What you wanna do is almost feel like you focus on your left shoulder, almost feel like you have a little reverse pivot. So as I come back, I'm almost leaning left as I'm going in my back. So I'm gonna exaggerate so you can see that. And then you'll notice I'm doing that a very small amount in my normal swing. So here I'm leaning left. And then as I come through, I'm falling a little bit back and as I fall back, my hips extend. So I'm not doing this. That's the death move. I'm just keeping my chest down. That's the death move for chipping. I'm doing this. I'm leaning left. And as I fall back, now my body's moving back. My hips are moving forward. My hips are toward the target because I've rotated. And because I'm falling back a little bit, that controls my club from digging in the ground. I can feel like I'm throwing this thing in the ground as hard as I want to, but as long as I come back this way, what happens is that left shoulder rises and I feel like I couldn't chunk this thing if I wanted to because as I fall this way, it just levels it out. It's like taking this club. Imagine I was gonna drop it into the ground like this. So I have the club here and I'm just gonna let this thing fall into the turf. But what happens when I lift my hand up? Right, as my hand starts to turn back up, it levels it out like a, like a plane coming into a runway. It comes down, it levels out, and it's gonna come back up if it wants to. Same thing's happening here. I'm letting the momentum of the club swing, and I'm letting the pivot of my left shoulder and my body make sure that that never digs down in the turf. That's why I can take just with one hand, I'll move this ball so you can see, I could take just with one hand, and I could just brush the turf there every single time. It's not like I'm some fantastic athlete. I'm just using the momentum of the club and the pivot of my body to control that low point. So what I'm feeling there, little forward shaft lean, I'm leaning this way, my left shoulder's coming down. I'm exaggerating here on that. You'll see me doing it more uh, to a smaller degree in the real one. And then as I come through, my shoulder leans back and that keeps me from digging. That's how you can get this low point control really, really good. And eventually what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to hit these golf balls off the screen and feel like we're never gonna take a divot. I hit that one about 30 feet in the air. I'm never gonna take a divot, I'm never gonna dig. And I could just sit in here and hit them all day. So I've hit two in a row. Both of those flew at least 30 feet. They ended up almost 50 feet from me and I didn't dig anything into the ground. I still hit the turf. I still brush the grass a little bit but you can look on the camera, you see there's no, there's no digging. I'm not roughing up that turf at all. So I'm making really nice, clean contact. Now I'm going a little farther. That one flew about 50 feet in the air. And I'm gonna go even farther than that here and make a little harder swing just to show you, you can ramp this up and go faster and faster once you get it down. And that's about the max I can do. That's about a 70 footer. 
that was just a little tiny bit thin there. But even for this drill, that would be pushing it. So I really just want to do this feeling that momentum of the club and just practice by hitting little five and 10 foot chips like that. Now here's the way you get your precision in on it. What's gonna happen is if you go straight to the turf, you're gonna get a little bit nervous. You're gonna feel like you don't wanna dig down in there and you're gonna pick it up, or you're not gonna have that pivot down yet and it's gonna wanna dig on you. You're gonna chunk it one time and you're gonna wanna quit this drill. Here's how you wanna start with a bucket of sand. And I'll be honest with you, most people aren't gonna do what I say here. And most people aren't gonna get the success that you get if you do what I say here. But if you take the time to do this every day, or, or at least seven times, I would say, here's how it's gonna happen. The first time you do this drill, you're gonna think, daggone it, this is impossible. I'm never gonna get this. This is so hard. I don't know what Clay's talking about. I can't feel the pivot. I can't feel my left shoulder. I can't feel the momentum of the club. It's really, really tough. The second time you do this drill, you're gonna think, man, that was hard. But oh, that one, I actually hit pretty decent. By the third time you do this drill, and the fourth and the fifth, it's gonna to start to feel pretty good. By the sixth and seventh time, it's gonna feel just completely natural, like you can just brush this turf every single time. It's not gonna be that hard for you. But if you quit after the first one, you're never gonna to get to the good stuff. So here's what I wanna feel. Again, it's like if this club was gonna sort of fall down in the ground, I'm lifting my hands up to keep it from digging there. I'm doing that by letting my shoulder come down. And you watch a lot of great pitchers of the golf ball. The they're gonna look like they're leaning a little left and then as they come through, they're falling back this way away from the target. So I'm gonna set up a little pile of sand about an inch tall here. And what I wanna do is I just wanna clip the very top portion of that sand. So I've hit that sand now and I've made two swings. I barely touched it that time. Three swings, I'm just clipping little grains of sand off there. I missed it that time. But I'm gonna keep on going and I'm just gonna fast forward here until all this sand's gone. Right, and I've rushed it now down to where all the sand pile's gone and there's nothing left. I'm gonna see how many strikes I can make with an inch tall pile of sand until I get down to the bottom. And if I can get four, five, or six little swipes where I just take a little bit of sand off and a little bit more sand off, a little bit more sand off, then I'm really controlling the low point. Now, you don't have to do that very much. 15, 20 swings and you'll be surprised how much better of a feel you have for this. And again, two, three, four days in a row, and now all of a sudden you have a really good feel to where you can just kind of pick it every single time. I'm so excited to share with you this drill that's really helped my short game, and I hope it's a game changer for you too. If you want to be really good around the greens, you have to be able to control where this club is hitting the ground in relationship to the golf ball. If you're not able to do that, you're going to tend to hit chunks, thins and blades. And I tell you what, there's nothing more frustrating than having an easy up and down for par and then blading it over the green into the bunker on the other side, then ending up with double instead. I've seen that destroy many rounds. But when I see people really struggle with this, what's happening is, is they're typically locking up their, their knees and their hips and they're doing everything with their arms too much. So they'll bring the club up, the trail arm will kind of go back behind them a little bit, they'll bend it a lot, and then the, the wrist will really hinge. And when you do that, you come down very, very steep and across the ball and it just makes it so difficult to control where you're hitting the ground. If we want to be good at hitting the ground in the same spot every single time, we have to get everything moving back and through together. We have to unlock our legs and be able to swing back and through. And this drill is so good to help you do that. So first, let's talk about a couple quick setup tips here. So number one, I wanna have my feet pretty close together, you know, a club head or two apart. The reason for this is if I have my feet further apart, I'm gonna to tend to wanna to shift my weight to one side and then the other. Now that's great for generating power, but we're not trying to generate power here. We're trying to generate, or we're trying to get good at controlling where we're hitting the ground in relationship to the golf ball. And if we have our feet closer together, it's much easier to stay centered and do that very well. So that's number one. Number two is we wanna have our feet opened up a little bit. That makes it a lot easier to get the body working through. Imagine if I set up with my feet closed. If I do that, my hips are gonna stall out. I'm gonna hit a roadblock and I'm gonna to tend to kind of flip the hands through. Again, that's gonna make it really difficult to control where we're hitting the ground. 
Now, you can play around with it. I like to be roughly 20, 25 degrees, but play around with how open your stance is. I've seen players with their feet 45 degrees open uh, before. So play around with that to find what works best for you. Lastly is our ball position. It's gonna be roughly about in the middle of my stance. It may look like it's on my back foot, but that's just because my feet are really close together. If I lifted up my back foot, it's pretty close to my lead foot as well. So it's gonna be roughly about in the middle of my stance. Now, initially here, I want you to set up away from the golf ball. So I'm gonna get in my setup here for this drill, and I'm just gonna do some practice swings at first, but I'm gonna take my lead hand and I'm gonna put it above my trail shoulder. Now, what this does is this is gonna keep my trail arm from, going, from bending too much and going back behind me, and it's gonna force me to unlock my body and get everything working through together. Now, when you're holding your arm, you're just trying to keep it from going back behind you. You're not trying to push it into your body. It's just kind of hanging there and keeping you from moving it back behind you. So we're just gonna set up here, and I just want you to go back and through. So unlock those, those legs, get those knees working, get those hips working, get that chest working back and through, and you're gonna find that when you do this, it's so much easier to hit the ball or hit the ground in the same spot every single time. I'm looking at a little speck on the mat here and I'm seeing that speck move every single time I swing through. So get a bunch of these in to get comfortable with this. And you can see when I'm doing this that my knees are moving around, my trail arm isn't bending very much, it's maybe bending a little bit, and my trail wrist is just hinging a little bit. So it may be something to get used to but get used to this feeling of going back and forth. Now, once you get that right feeling, now we can step up and try to hit a ball here. So let's go ahead and get our normal setup. So again, feet close together, opened up, ball about in the middle of my stance, lead arm or lead hand on my trail elbow. I'm just gonna go back and through here. So that was a very, very good contact, medium trajectory shot. Now, once you get really good with this, then you can start controlling the trajectory there. So that was kind of my stock medium trajectory. Let's go over what I'm feeling there. So I'm taking that, that normal setup, but when I'm coming through, I'm feeling like this club, when it gets about belt level, is staying parallel with my hands. It's at the same level of my hands. And that's gonna give me that stock medium trajectory kind of pitch size. So let's do another one here where I'm getting that nice medium trajectory. So again, really, really good contact, medium trajectory kind of shot. Well, let's say I wanna drive it in a little bit lower. I wanna bring it in lower. Maybe I got some wind in my face. Maybe I, I wanna land it in the middle and kinda of run it all the way to the back. Well, if I'm trying to bring it in really low, I'm going to feel like when I release that that club is staying below my hand when I get to that point. So when my hands get up to about belt level, that club is still below my hand. And that's gonna allow me to de-loft it as I'm coming through. And the other thing I may do is I may play it a little bit further back in my stance, more off my big toe. So let's go ahead and give that a try. More off my big toe here. And I'm gonna feel like as I'm coming through that this club is staying below my hand as I'm coming through there. We're gonna get a nice low trajectory. So you can see there, that was much lower trajectory and I was able to keep that club below my hand there. Well now let's say I want the high soft one. Well the high soft one, I'm gonna have that normal address position and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the face about 10, 15 degrees. So I'm gonna take that face and open it up just a little bit. And then what I'm gonna feel on my release here, I'm gonna feel like when I, my hand gets up to that belt level, that that club is a little bit above my hand. And that's gonna allow me to release the club a little bit more into the ball. So let's see if we can get a nice, high, soft one here. So again, normal address position. I've got the face a little bit open. Let's see if we can get a nice, high, soft one here. So you can see I got that one to go nice and high, club above the hands. That ball hit you know, somewhere up a little bit, you know, about five feet higher on the screen here. And that's what I'd be doing if I wanna get that nice, high, soft one. Now all these shots here are in that 10 to 20 yard range. But what do we do when we get 40, 60, 80 yards out? Well, we still wanna make sure that we're turning our body back and through, just like we're doing here, but there's a specific rhythm tempo and a technique that we use to control the speed and length of the swing that's really gonna help you to dial that in. So that way you can be an assassin from 100 yards and in. Well, I have a fantastic bonus video for you where Clay Ballard, the founder of Top Speed Golf, is gonna go over exactly his tips on how to do that. So if you wanna stick around, I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in just a minute. But if you wanna see the whole entire video, all you have to do is click the iCard that's gonna appear up on your screen, or you can click the link in the description below. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. 
Well, I used to actually practice a lot in high school. This is one of my favorite things to do. I had a, a strip mowed down the back of my yard where I took the lawnmower. My parents probably hated this because I mowed it down to like half inch turf in the back of the yard because we lived on a farm. And I would set buckets or towels along this and I would try to set them at those distances that I knew. And maybe I, I knew my, my 56 degree went right at 65 yards. So I'd set a bucket 65 yards away and I would go ahead and do my nine o'clock swing and I would try to fly it right into the bucket. And I'd be, get to where I could, I could tell for sure if I was gonna be a couple yards short or a couple yards long, just because it gets so ingrained when you get the rhythm and the finish the same every time. We can use different length back swings to control the distance of our wedge shots. So for example, if we imagine that I'm a clock and six o'clock is directly down, my wedge would be at six o'clock or my, my arms would be at six o'clock. I can go back to a 7.30 swing and I can have the same finish and hit it a certain distance, or I can go back to nine or 10.30 and swing through to the same distance. And that's gonna control, or the same finish point, and that's gonna control the distance that my wedge shots are gonna fly in the air. And I've gotta keep that ry rhythm, that tempo very, very consistent. If I vary my tempos, I can hit it all kinds of different distances. So for example, I could have a real quick tempo, 7.30 swing, and probably hit this 90 yards. I could have a, maybe not really that far, probably 50 or 60 yards. I could have a very slow, slow tempo 730 swing and hit half that distance. So I've got to get my distance the same. I've got to get my rhythm the same. That's the real key to it. And the second piece on there.